Yo, what's good with y'all? So today I'm gonna be doing a little quick little video. So I'm gonna show you guys some simple tricks, effects, and techniques I use to make my samples sound more vintage, like Frank Dukes, Q Beats. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy and learn something new, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let's get straight to it. So sound selection is extremely important when it comes to making samples. So when it comes to the best VSTs to use to make your sound vintage, for me, the number one go-to is definitely Mellotron. Mellotron and Analog Lab 5 in general just has a tons and tons of vintage sounding instruments you could use. But when I'm definitely going for that, by Mellotron is like my go-to. But yeah, I have the demo, so you guys can go search up Mellotron 5 and just get the demo yourself as well. All right, so first, I'm gonna lay it on a melody and I'm using the preset called De Mari. So this is it. This is the only melody I'm going to be using for the whole sample. Now I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to change this into a full sample, specifically make it sound old and vintage and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to export it. When it comes to making instruments sound vintage, a lot of people go straight to the effects and try to make it sound vintage by adding like some effect rack, RC20, which those are some very good plugins as well. But I feel like a lot of people don't really export it and mess with the actual wave file itself. So now I'm going to show you guys some tricks I use when it comes to tweaking with a wave file like this and making it sound more like old and gritty. So first, what I did with the red one is I took the basic sample that I had here and I stretched it by just going up here, selecting this little double arrow, grabbing the tail of the wave and just dragging it out. So it's basically half the speed. And then all I did is I cut the second half off and I just had this right here. I didn't like the chord that plays right here. So all I did is I just cut that off. Now for the blue one, it's just the original sample. All I did for this one is I cut the first chord out cause it's already playing in the red one. And then this is what we got. And I pitched both of these up by 200 cents. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export that and now I'm gonna build off of that. Messing with the pitch and the tempo of your sample could really help make it sound a lot less clean, more gritty, especially if you're pitching it up a lot or down a lot. So what I did is I chopped it up here every couple bars. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grab the tail of the sample and I'm gonna drag it in just a tiny bit. And you wanna make sure it's on generic bleeding because if it's not, it's gonna have a really loud like pop. And then I'll just drag it in so the arrows are meeting like that and they'll already make it sound like if you threw it into the slicer. And I'm gonna grab the first chop of every couple bars. If you're on FL Studio 21, you could grab the arrow right here, hold Alt, and that's gonna snap to the grid, and I'm gonna just fade it in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export that on its own. So now we have a solid melody. I'm gonna be getting into the effects. And one of the best ways to make it sound more vintage is applying an EQ and taking out most of the highs. When a sample has a lot of highs, it sounds very nice and clean. So taking out that clean factor of it already makes it sound a lot more old. Now, since the instrument we picked already sounded really vintage and nice, there's not too much highs in it as you can tell. just a little bit of like noise at the top but there's really no highs for us to take out because we picked such a good sound So that's basically all I'm doing here, just filtering out the sound. Now we're gonna get into some of the best effects I recommend using. The number one best effect I recommend using is Somatics Origin. This plugin is my number one recommendation only because it's free. Yes, there is better ones out there to get, but this one's definitely the best free one to get. And every time I use it, I just use the stock preset or I'll use the lo-fi one. But what it basically does is it adds some saturation, it already adds some vinyl and some movement, which is basically just like some detuning. And it filters it out with this big knob right here. So as you can see, I already add some nice saturation and some nice vinyl noise in the background as like a texture. Now I'm going to mute this one and I'm gonna show some other ones as well. RC20 is probably my favorite. It's not too expensive and it's probably one of the best ones you could buy. It has so many nice presets, but I think Vinyl 1, Vinyl 3 is probably the best ones for sure. One thing I like doing is I'll throw on the RC20 on here and then I'll pitch my sample down probably five semitones and then I'll put a sound shifter on here and then I'll raise it again five semitones so it's the same pitch it's just all the effects are also pitched up as well and 
as you can hear the vinyl texture is pitched up all the little textures and all the little effects it adds are all pitched up and it just sounds a lot more vintage and a lot less clean but the last thing i'm going to add is gross beat Other than that, those effects are pretty nice. I'm not gonna add any more, but I will show two more effects that I like to use to make it sound even more old or vintage. I really like using Ozone Imager, and this allows you to control the width and how the sound looks. Now, when it comes to making your sample sound vintage, a lot of people tend to just make their sounds all the way mono, and I used to do that as well. If you just make all your sounds mono, your sample's gonna, of course, be completely mono, and it's just gonna sound very empty. What I started to do is I would use this Ozone Imager, and I'll make certain instruments be mono, and then certain instruments be a lot more stereo having a mixture of both will make your samples still sound vintage but also make it sound a lot better and a lot more full another one i like to use a lot is sketch cassette which is very very cheap i think it's like 20 or 15 dollars and a lot of the presets in here are perfect the classic tape lo-fi wow filter has everything you need with even like tape saturation the hiss the age dropouts it even has like some nice compression flanging and then lastly one of my favorites to use is the j37 stereo i like using this one a lot but i usually add this on top of like my entire sample but now that i showed a lot of my favorite effect now we're gonna just wrap up this sample so all i did is i pitched it down 200 cents and i raised the bpm and then i duplicated that over except this one is pushed an octave down then this is the final sample Like you guys saw in the video, I use my Vanguard Creative One Kit. It has a bunch of vintage sounding synth analog accents, phrases, has some flute, guitar, strings, vocals, has some nice textures to add in the background. But other than that, that's the whole video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave some ideas or feedback or any tricks or VSTs you guys use in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.